Hey, this is Ms. Bratcher, and in this lesson we're going to learn how to create style sheets and add some color to our web page. This is called CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And there are three different types of style sheets. We have inline, which always wins, internal, and external. External is the one that we're going to want to end up using the most. Um, however, when we first start to make it easier for you guys, we're going to be creating internal style sheets, which means we're going to add the styles right on the particular page that we're working in. So that's called an internal style sheet. To add an internal style sheet, you're going to put the style tags in the head tag. So let's try that out. So you're going to go over into the head tag. I like to place mine below the title and below the metadata. And you just type style, lowercase letters. And if you open a tag, remember you have to close the tag. And we now have an internal style sheet. However, we don't have any styles going on just yet. There is a certain way to write CSS. It should look like this. And each of these elements have a name. There is the selector, which is first, the property, which goes second, that identifies what changes we want to make, like color, font size, and the value is the specific change. What color do you want? What font size is it that you want? And that first thing, the selector, is the element we're working with. So if you just specify body, it's going to change anything that's in the body. All right, let's get started. So if we wanted to change the background color of our entire page, we could type body. Then you're going to do a curly brace. And then we want to tell it that we're going to be changing the background color. Then you have to do a colon. Oops, mine wouldn't work because I'm missing the D. And then you have to specify the color. You could simply type a color and then close the curly brace. Or if you really want to get specific with the colors, you can look up color codes. For example, if you Google HTML color codes, different color charts pop up like this. You can pick a certain color or you can use those color scheme generators that you all have been using. And you would just copy this, head back to your lesson. So instead of red, I would do the number sign and then that color code. And now I have a background color. So the body is the selector, that's the item we're changing. Background color is the property, that's what we want to do to that body. And the hashtag 36E3BD is the color code or the value. It's important to remember that there is a certain way to write CSS. You have to do the selector, then the curly brace, then the property, then a val or a colon then the value, then a semicolon, and then after the semicolon you have to close that curly brace. Um, it's always helpful to put SPV at the top of your page to remind you. It's S, curly brace, P, colon, V, semicolon. Selector, property, value. All right, now let's go ahead and change the color of our paragraph. So to do that, I'm going to hit Enter. And my selector would be P, since I want to style my paragraph. Curly brace. Then I could just do color to change the color. And then you can choose the color. So if I just typed in red, end it with a semicolon, and then a curly brace, now all of my paragraph text turns to red. If I want a specific color, you can go look up a color code. Grab a specific color over here. Copy that color code. Put in the number sign and then that code and it will change it. If I want to style my heading, I do an H1, curly brace. I can do color again. Grab a color code from over here. Copy it. Put in the number sign, paste it in. You always end your values with a semicolon and a curly brace. And now my heading has changed. If you want to change multiple headings, you can do a comma, H2. And that will apply to both of those headings. If I want to keep styling my headings, I don't have to keep putting that selector over and over again. You would use the same selector, hit enter, and then keep adding values. So maybe I want to do text align center semicolon. 
and it just centered my headings. Maybe I want to do font size. Now I'm going to try 30 pixels and it just changed their size. Maybe I want to change that to 40 pixels, but I don't want my heading 1 and 2 to both look the same. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my heading 2 from here. Um, and to find more properties, you can just click on this link here and discover all kinds of different properties. You can even change the font family and choose a different font. So you'd have to look up which fonts are available. If you wanted to change the font family, if the font had multiple names like Times New Roman, you're going to have to put it in quotation marks, which is different. If it's just one name like Georgia or Ariel, then you don't have to use those quotation marks. Here I just search for a list of web safe fonts and it pulls up this page so you can use this page to help decide which fonts you want to choose and it shows you a sample on the side. Sometimes they will list several different fonts that way if one font doesn't show up you've got another option and that's what they do that it's just as a backup. So I'm gonna pick oh how about this font right here I'm just gonna copy that head back to my lesson and let's go ahead and do a font family And since all of the fonts that I chose are single words, I didn't need the quotation marks. But if I had chose Times New Roman, you'd put quotation marks around each font. And if you're unsure how to format that, you can look at their example here. So Arial Black has quotation marks, Arial Black quotation marks, then the comma. And you'll notice that my heading one changed.